I'm off on a bike ride. Mark's not coming with me because he hurt his leg from running with me yesterday. So I thought I'd take you with me. So I'm just going to get my helmet on and get off and uh, see what we can find. Just nip through the estate and get onto um, the trails. This is the start of my ride. I've just nipped down through estate, and uh, as I was saying uh, when I was on the drive, uh, but I didn't stay talking long because neighbours were watching me out the window. And uh, I'm going to go a recce to see uh, part of my route for my 30 mile race. It's quite a way on the bike. Um, to where I'm going. I'm going to the first aid station at Hazel Gap. So I thought I'd take you with me and I will point out some interesting places on the way. We're in Clipston or formerly known as New Clipston. Old Clipston is further down and that uh, was formerly known as Clipston Village um, until they built um, the new houses for the pit. The pit was uh, um built in 1922 so uh, things started to change for the village and now this part where i am now is called just clipston and old clipston is called king's clipston which on the way i will explain why they changed the name so let's get off We're now going to go down this little lane and just over there is a little stream and in about 11, 11th century uh, King John's time it used to be a little river. Now you can't really call it a river, it's more like a little stream. So uh, further down I will show you um, what it's ended up being turned into over the centuries and why. As I ride down here, if I can do this one handed, I think there's a dog coming up so I might have to switch off so I might end up pulling off. But uh, we're heading for Vickers Water and I'll explain what that's all about in a minute. Right, I'm back again. So this is uh, Vickers Water. We're just approaching, just approaching the first uh, top pond. And um, I was saying it used to be a little river uh, called a different name. Um, I can't quite remember it. I did, I, I did look it up the other day. And then it's gone out of my head. It's a bit awkward to say. So about in the 1100s, this river uh, went down to the River Morn and joined. And King John had a hunting lodge, which is not much left of it now. It's a um, listed building, protected type thing. I'll see if I can show you. You might not be able to see it when we get down to the bottom because um, the GoPro don't zoom and we're going to be quite a distance away so you might be able to see it on the horizon. So 
in uh, 1700s this land uh, became the Duke of Portland's and he altered the, the river and dammed it off to make a fishery so um, to grow fish on to take to Hardwick Abbey ponds so then things all started to change again which I'll tell you about when we get further down I meant uh, Welbeck um, Abbey for the fish this is a car park over there free parking well donations but the uh, machine doesn't seem to work lately and this is the top pond we turn you around and show you and if I scan you around up onto behind them trees is the old pit tip if you look that path there goes right up onto the tops so in 1922 let me turn you around in 1922 the colliery was um, built and you're about to see the headstock still even though it's um, it clo it's closed now uh, as we go a bit further down and all this changed because uh, they bought all this land but they kept the ponds here and the fishing rights were given to the colliery by the Duke of Portland and so they put um, all the so that's a duck behind me frightened me out to death um, they put all the uh, rubbish out the pit onto the tips which built it up round the ponds which has made it really sheltered and um, then all the houses were built for the colliery uh, and the people from the houses that was moving in um, got to use this a uh, nice area for recreation and uh, my dad worked at Clipston Pit and we lived in uh, one of the colliery well my mum and dad lived in one of the colliery houses uh, I was born just after they moved to their own house so um, I wasn't actually born in a colliery house so we'll move on and move down further on and you can see the rest of the lakes and um, we might be able to see the, the headstocks as well. bottom car park I'm just going to go and show you the headstocks if we can see them through the trees this is the stream and it's now called Vickers Water I don't know why it was called Vickers Water I'll have to research that but I played down here as a kid I have got waterproof shoes on but I'm not going to risk it and that's the hand because after the mine sh closed uh, they've turned this into a nature reserve and uh, one day when we came down here they'd put this up been here in a long time now right we're going to go around we're not going to go around the ponds the lake 
Um, it's used to, for fishing a lot these days. I'm going to go um, round and through a tunnel. The other tunnel, where we came down, used to be a big long tunnel when I was a kid, when we used to come down to fish. So uh, that's been taken down because that was uh, a way of getting the trucks across the river to the other side to tip on top of the pit tips. And if you just turn you around, you can see one of the pit tips now. And it looks quite pretty, all covered in trees. One of the bigger ones, they, take, they took it down again recently and got more coal out of it. We're going to be following cycle route six, which you can see on the signs. So now we're on cycle route six. We're approaching another tunnel. This one's a railway tunnel. Uh, this land was altered by the pit and the railways because they had to build you know, it's a bit dark in here but they want to see me they had to build lots of lines to get the coal out so uh, the, the different uh, different things that they did on this land kind of altered it from a flat to a very hilly area with lots of tunnels and railway lines. Up into the distance, you can't see it here, so I think you'll be able to see it from a bit further down behind, back of that farm, where you might be able to see the remains of King John's hunting lodge. And I forgot to put my wind buff on today, um, so I'm sorry if we've got a bit of wind. In between them two telegraph poles, there's some, looks like some rocky, a rocky building sticking up, uh, and then the farm over on this side it's about there um, I don't know whether you're able to see it if I get a bit closer down but that's what's left of King John's hunting lodge I can see it a lot better from this view but you probably can't. It's kind of just there. But all it is is stones. Nothing of much of a shape to anything. So that was King John's hunting lodge. And uh, he came here quite a bit, apparently. And that is why when they had built a new housing estate uh, and they needed to call it something not far from here, um, they decided to, to call it King's Clipston, which then the council decided to call Old Clipston Village King's Clipston. So all the names got changed. So I'm about to go on and I'll see you later on.
Dog and Duck and this is where the mountain bike club used to meet but they've closed it down and they're refitting it I think I don't know what they're doing up there So now we're going to carry on on cycle route 6 and we're going to cross that road there and I'm not going to film for a bit because I'm going to have to go and move on because I've been uh, doing a lot of wasting of time trying to keep uh, the video still uh, and stopping to film so it's not shaky uh, so I need to go move on if I want to be back before it's dark all right see you later up to a very interesting building it looks like one that used to be some sort of a hunting lodge because the big archway where the horse and carts could go underneath and uh, and then above you can see where they would have gone up to probably have a lunch or whatever big hunting area around here because of uh, Sherwood Forest and hunting deer so uh, in the past this was probably all the king's land a lot of uh, hunting went on of deer and then the Duke of Portland it was Duke of Portland's land there we are that looks very nice doesn't it see where the horse, horse and carts would have gone underneath and then they would have had uh, lunch and stuff above so I'm just going to push the bike while I'm talking to you this time so I can keep moving people probably think I'm quite mad and that what we've just been looking at is actually someone's house now um, so I didn't like to stay too long taking photographs and videoing somebody's house they might have looked out the window and not been very pleased so we're about to cross the main road to Edwinstow and uh, so I'm going to put the cameras away and get on because it's a long stretch and uphill uh, to the next road that um, I've got to, to cross which takes me to Hazel Gap where I was intending on going and my recce for my race starts there but I've got to be careful I don't stay out too long and come back in the dark because I th well I think I've got I think I've got lights. No, I haven't. The light, somebody's took the lights off. That's Mark when he cleaned it. That was clever of him. I've had lights on uh, all this year and not you hardly use my bike. And he now I want to use my bike, he takes the bloody lights off.
is the turn in for Sherwood Forest, for the visitor centre and the Major Oak and Edwinstow. But we're not going that way, we're going straight on. Uh, I've, got this, I've got the sun in my eyes, so I've uh, turned round. So we're going that way. And uh, I'm going to put it back in its case and just hope it don't steam up again. As you can see, I've got my bike computer. I don't know if you can see the map on it or not, but uh, let's look at this signpost. There we are, it says uh, Hazel Gap up there, Bridal Way, Cycle Route 6, Clumber Park, and Orton. So we're on the right uh, road. just come up this is where the poor 40 milers will be turning off and going down we're going to have a break here well you have to excuse the helmet here I've stopped for a banana and a drink and this is Hazel Gap and this is where I will be uh, running to to the first uh, aid station. If I turn the camera around, that's where I'll be running down. But I'll have already changed dogs because me and my husband think it might be better to change the dog um, further up that path at another car park um, because they don't like uh, you to have too many cars. Because I'll show you as on the way out. Because on the way out we'll be carrying on that way. Um, there's not really much parking like I said earlier the 40 milers are going to be going that way and uh, the aid station tent is going to be there so I'm uh, going to have five minutes rest it's not uh, as uh, late as I thought it was I've kept saying afternoon to everybody and it's only just afternoon now um, so I've got, I'd got my times wrong. I thought I'd come out later. I must have looked at the clock wrong. Um, but I thought I came out about 12 o'clock, but according to my uh, Garmin, it was um, 12 something when I looked at it last time. So I couldn't come out at 12 o'clock, could I? Anyway, right, I'm gonna get on and have uh, a drink and a banana. The sun's come out and I bet my hair looks a mess. I might have said that once. Got me banana, had a drink, and we're gonna get off in a minute. I've just rung my husband to tell him I'm safe and uh, where I am. And uh, moan at him for taking my lights off. And I've told him if it gets dark before I get back, I'll find nearest road and he's got to come and fetch me at van. Serve him right for taking me uh, lights off me bike, not it. Anyway, well, he had a reason for it, so he says. He took them off because I would be racing. So, so I wouldn't, if I crashed, which you quite often do uh, when it's muddy, when you're racing, um, that I'd have knocked my lights off. So I suppose he was right. So I'm going to get on and get across to uh, Crestle Crags, Crags as quick as I can, if I can find it. And um, I'll see you in a bit.
on to the country estates. There's quite a lot of country estates uh, in this area. They all border on to each other. Well, I think I've gone wrong. I've come too far through the village. Uh, but it's going to be a bit of a hump up some steps with the bike. But I can cut across and join, join the route I was supposed to take. So I've not really come wrong. Uh, and never been on this exact spot before, even though I've been in that church. But um, this is really good. Looks like it's uh, wildlife, uh, like a little reserve type of thing. Another one of these little houses, quite often the gate houses. Another nice little cottage and I think I'm, this is Clumber, the edge of Clumber, I'm sure it is. And I think we're going to go down this path. My sat nav says I'm on the right route and let's show you all these little snowdrops. Look at all these snowdrops. Some more down there. Really nice. I can get you a bit closer to that falling off my bike. Hang on, this will be it. Uh. Ah, water! No! I'm gonna get wet. Ah. Well, it's a good job I have waterproof shoes on. That was a bit silly, wasn't it, Tina? Should have slowed down. But I got the camera in my hand. Oh, never mind. I think my thick trousers are a bit wet as well. Never mind. I have emergency um, provisions in. Unless I just ring my husband and tell him to bring the van. <laughs> if I get completely lost. There's another nice cottage right over in there. It's all. There was um, Duke of Portland and another Duke. Uh, now I'll have to look I'll look it up when I get home and put it on the screen and uh, this area is called the Dukeries because there is that many big houses so close together practically bordering on each other uh, with masses of land all belonging to Dukes that's how it um, became known as the Dukeries. So, whoa, that's a big buzzard. I don't think you can see it. Can you see it? I wouldn't be in a puddle. I'm in a puddle. I hope you got that. That was beautiful. One-handed, cycling and filming and the little cottage look very nice farmers uh, farm workers cottages well gamekeepers and things like that this road's very flooded i'm gonna have to slow down otherwise i'm really going to get my feet wet ah the man said uh, i've just spoke to you'll be going through the deer park let me stop. Let me stop without falling off. So, one handed dismount. Bike all over the place. Right. I hope you can see them. Through here. Oops, let me try and get it a bit closer. Try and go over the top, that might be a bit easier. All white deer look. Really nice. They probably look like sheep from where you're from from a GoPro perspective. But my nose is running. So I'll carry on. I better pick my bike up though. Just leave it in the middle of the road, Tina. 
so silly. Uh, I think there's another farm over there. Look, that looks nice. I know we uh, entered uh, Clumber Park on the th on the half marathon, but this don't look familiar, so we must have took another way in. This is the back end of the Welbeck Estate, and uh, I'm not actually supposed to be on this road. Didn't realise that it was um, a private road. The race I'm doing actually comes up here, so they'll have got their I'll have got permission to go uh, through, but further up uh, in a bit we get to um, a bit that I wasn't supposed to go up at all. Um, it was all through the back end of the estate buildings and came out at the Dukeries Garden Centre. I'd never uh, never seen the back end of the Dukeries Garden Centre uh, before. It uh, didn't realise there was such a uh, a big house, a stately house behind it. As we got further into the estate, I uh, thought it uh, looked like um, Hardwick, and I was convinced I was in Hardwick um, because there was a section that uh, could have been part of Hardwick. The buildings were identical. Now, these are lovely buildings, but this was all the private side. <laughs> I was not supposed to be there, but seeing as it was a Sunday, there was nobody about, so they didn't uh, tell me off. This wall's lovely. The architecture around here was ever so nice. In fact, I passed one or two other little bits that on the way back I'd wished, I spotted on the way back, and I wished I'd uh, filmed. But on the way back, I was just making a mad dash for home before it got dark. This is a beautiful place. And I didn't even know it really existed. You just can't see it from the road because of the garden centre at the front, which was part of uh, um, the estate as well. In fact, the estate lands go right over towards Crestwall Crags, where I was heading for. But uh, it's like... Um, a private little village isn't it you can imagine what it must have been like in um, the days when they had all the servants and everything it must have been a fantastic uh, busy place i think some of these buildings might be this one i'm passing now might be like something like the stables because they used to have separate stable areas um and they used to have lots of horses and things like that and that that looks more like a stable area for some strange reason, they seem to have clock towers on the stable areas in these uh, stately homes. I've noticed. I don't know to me why, but that uh, seems to be the, a theme. So now I'm coming out onto the road that takes us, uh, takes me back out onto the main road, and takes me out. I came up the side of uh, the Dukeries Garden Centre, and they've got an art gallery as well there now. So it was um, very interesting, even though actually I'd missed the turn in and wasn't supposed to go through that section. <laughs> I was supposed to come out at Lady Margaret's house uh, onto the main road and then go straight across, but I didn't. I'll come round this way instead. I've cut some footage out because uh, went on for miles but we just passed the entrance to the art gallery the car park you can get in from the other side that must be the back entrance and as I come to a stop uh, just up here where you see the cars coming out and I decide to pull up that's the entrance to the Dukeries Garden Centre just there and we've gone there for years now this is where I missed my turn in and couldn't find it and actually, I, I rode straight past it, not realising there's a little turn in, there's a bench on this side, and on the opposite side, which I've just passed now, that's where I should have turned. And I didn't realise, and I know my sat map was telling me to turn, so 
I didn't spot it till there's an I've passed a, another turn in and then I took this next turn in which took me into some houses so and then I was totally confused couldn't find it drove back down uh, rode back down and still missed it so so after a bit of messing about I decided that was enough um, I looked what time it was and thought well I better be setting off back um, because altogether I did 26 mile well just over 26 mile so it uh, was getting on a bit so I decided enough's enough and this is me heading back for the deer park well I'm on my way back home uh, we're in Nor Nor Norton and that is the way I went the first time then turned around and came back then I went down that way and my bike computer keeps saying I'm off track so only turning is that one there I could, perhaps could have gone up that one might have been it but I'm not sure but anyway I got onto the track that I was supposed to do a bit further up but I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go but I'm not that happy that I've got a run hold on this car coming I don't want to turn the, turn the camera around and uh, um, pointed to the car he looked at me a bit funny I've got a run up there all that road and it's a long one with the dogs well with a dog I'm not sure I'm quite happy it's the Saturday as well the Saturdays are always busy but look it's a, a nice old red telephone box still here and uh, nice little village but I'm not quite sure where um, I was supposed to have gone but we've got Cookney that way and Langworth and I know that I know these places and Clumber and Retford we're going back that way so somewhere there must be a footpath that I've missed but never mind I didn't quite get quite to um, Cresswell Crags I could have gone the roadway but uh, that wasn't the point not much point in getting to Cresswell Crags and not going the way that the race is going to be so we'll get off for home it's not far to Hazel Gap down there and then uh, back home well I've stopped for a snack in these nice woods You might be able to hear the road it's only just over there somewhere and up there not very far is Hazel Gap so I'm well on my way home and a uh, little bit disappointed that I didn't actually find the proper route um, but never mind I'm going to study my Garmin map that I'll have made today compare it to the map for the um, race and see where I went wrong um, I ought to have brought my sat map not the Garmin but the sat map I haven't got a bike mount for it uh, so I would have to keep getting it in and out of my pocket um, and we've gone wrong before with that one I don't know even when you've got a route it'll tell you to turn and you turn and then it tells you you've gone wrong so you can't understand it sometimes so I know the area um, I've never actually been lost because um, I know this area driven around it in the car I've been to the Dukeries garden centre that many times uh, but I've never been round the back where it were private where I weren't supposed to go <laughs> so that was good I quite enjoyed that it's a good job it were a Sunday weren't it nobody coming out shouting at me telling me that I should have been there um, so I've been places I didn't um, 
didn't know existed because you're not allowed to go that way unless I suppose you've got a business or you live down there uh, anyway I've had a nice day I probably won't film anymore because it's all the same on the way back as when I came so uh, I'm starting to get a bit tired uh, I could do some dinner which I was like, intending on getting at um, uh, Crestwell Crags I decided I wasn't going to stop and film I was just going to get off home so I just left the camera on the front of the bike uh, running and then I picked a few extra bits um, of me travelling home um, for you to see We're just coming up to what we call the junction now it's where quite a few railway lines cross uh, all built um, for the coal to get the coal out I have mentioned in this uh, video um, all about the Dukeries but we have got some more um, nice places as well we've got Newstead Abbey which is not uh, uh, far away just up Nottingham Road uh, towards Nottingham and uh, we have um, Hardwick Hall which was uh, Elizabeth the first's um, property and um, that's quite a nice uh, National Trust place to visit we're not far from uh, Chatsworth so oh we're not far from um, Woolerton Hall which is in Nottingham so this area has got absolutely stacks of uh, national history type places that um, uh, interesting um, we've got the major oak which I pointed out to, on the way out I'm going to go through Old Clipston which is now King's Clipston well I'm not going up the rattle no way too, uh, too steep I'm going to go up the back lane home We're just coming up to the old village now um, and as I cross the road and go down the hill on the opposite side you'll see a car turn and that is the rat hole and it's not I don't think it's on the map as, as called the rat hole uh, but it's an old name that's been there ever since anybody can remember my parents know it as the rat hole everybody around here knows it as the rat hole um, whether it has got anything to do with rats I don't know but uh, it's very steep and that's why I'm going down this way just coming up Squires Lane to Cavendish Farm and House it's um, really old it's got some old carts in this bit of a barn at the front I'm going to drive straight up to it so you can have a look and now uh, we're just going up what I, we locals call the back lane and um, I've just got a, a bit of a styly thing to cross 